Hello, friends. I'm uh, figuring out how all the tech works, but I'm here. I'm happy to be here. Uh, hi. Anyway, this is my first stream on YouTube, so we'll we'll work this out as we go. Um, so this is episode one of the live casts, which is a series that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. And it comes from this feeling of like wanting and almost like a need to share uh, my insights and my experiences of being an artist and being a human artist and being a mother and all the aspects of uh, my personal experience. Now, this is not about being self-centered and saying like, oh, look at me, my glamorous life, you know? It actually, like, I wasn't even thinking about this uh, until, uh, hey, I'm just checking out the comments. You can see me and hear me? Hello, hello. Okay, awesome. So I usually, my routine is that in the morning when the children are sleeping and the family is sleeping, um, hi. Uh, I I do art and I put on a podcast or something to listen to. And I've been actually following a few, uh, mostly women on YouTube, but not just women who kind of share their experiences and their life. And it's not like a very dense content. It's not something that I need to watch and um, follow like a tutorial. It is more like a stream of consciousness that they do and it has enabled me to have some of the deepest insights and transformations for my own personal path. And at the same time, I, I literally feel like overflowing from inside of me, the same feeling of like wanting to share, just share. Like there's nothing behind this, but to share my experiences. Uh, and I'm going into this with the mindset is is that if it helps one person, I'm super happy. If it fail, if it helps hundreds, thousands, millions, you know, billions, who knows? Like it doesn't matter how many people this helps. It's kind of like I just want to do this. Okay, so I also want to preface this by saying that these are my personal opinions. These are my personal experiences, and uh, if it if something I say doesn't exactly resonate with you, that's perfectly okay. You know, take what works, leave what isn't. And if it doesn't resonate at all over time, just, you know, we're all free human beings. We can just not watch. So, hey, uh, Vicky, good to see you. Yes, these are little gummy bears. Uh, yes, so cute. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> uh, uh, Marielle says, because of you, I'm um, uh, using the Procreate app. Oh my goodness. Thank you for sharing that. Like, I, I have to say that I am a bit nervous and, you know, like this is something new, but it's all good. We like, I know that you're here, we're friends and we're doing this uh, and we're doing this. So what I want to talk about today is what I stand for. I think every week I will pick a different theme. I would like to do these things weekly, this, this live casts weekly. Like I'm committing to this in my mind when my children are in school, because when they are home, I want to have the space to be with them. I, I, because, you know, if you've ever done videos and lives, there is a lot of prep, both uh, physical and emotion that goes into it. Uh, and I want to be present with them. But when I am in my work flow, I don't want to have any excuses for not showing up. So every week I'll pick a different topic. I'm thinking this one I'm thinking. I reflect on it throughout the week that I feel is necessary to share at the moment. Uh, but today I want to sort of, since this is the first one, I want to establish what do I stand for? So like I, Tatiana Dennis, the human being, not even so much as a brand or like, you know, I have a membership, the Kawaii Drawing Club, and the Kawaii Drawing Club has its own sort of values, its own uh, ethos. And then, you know, there's all the social media and all that stuff. But right now, I am specifically talking about my 
experience and what I stand for as an individual <laughs> versus you inspiring so many others by doing what you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Um, so I, I have distilled my values into three words, um, create, co-create and elevate. So I'll address each one separately. Uh, and I, you know, it's, this is kind of like a stream of consciousness. So I'm, I'm going to stick to it, but whatever like insights come, I'm going to work into it. So create, what does that mean for me? So again, I, I keep saying, like, I keep repeating this thing. I'm a human being on earth and I really like stand by this. And I believe that we are creative, like we are creative, the humans. Uh, and to create is some of the happiest moments. And it is like our self-actualization. Uh, so creativity is just part of the fiber of who we are. And we create at every point of our existence. So yes, there is, you know, like what I dress, what earrings I pick, uh, how I decorate my space, how I decorate my house. But it's also like every little thing that I go about during the day, the way I prepare my children's lunch boxes, uh, the way that I live, you know, actually last year and actually this year as well, I took a makeup course with Megan Brown, which is amazing. And she asked us to put together a, a Pinterest board of inspirations. And I named that board the biggest creative project. Like, uh, and I saved their like makeup inspirations, outfits, colors, and everything. So the idea is that I am the biggest creative project of my life, and you are the biggest creative project of your life. And, you know, there is no division of like who is creative and who is not creative. Uh, but what happens is that in life, right? We get busy. We get busy with responsibilities. Uh, it's very interesting. So I was born in Russia. I immigrated to United States when I was a child, and then I immigrated to Australia when I was already a working adult. So, uh, but uh, so I'll bring in some wisdom and insights from the culture, like the Russian culture and the upbringing that I've had. So in Russian, there are two words that are almost the same, but there's one letter difference. So the first word is bit. So you just listen to it, right? Uh, I wouldn't write it. So bit, which means all the things that we do in order to exist, like the food, the clothing, the shelter, like the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Like that's the bit, except the self-actualization part. And then there is the bit. So bit, bit. It's a very soft ending, right? There is one little uh, soft sign on the end of it. And bit means to exist, to exist. It's, it's, it's that timeless uh, concept of like, you know, when you are creating, perhaps you go into that space where you just are. You just are present to the moment. You can like hear things. You perceive things on a new level. You you're not really watching the clock. You you like you have no perception of like where you need to be. You're in your art. Like it's the zone, the flow. You know that's what beat is, and you can see that the difference between these two words is one letter, right? These things are so intertwined. They are so like, uh, they they are very close, but they are not the same thing. So I remember having this insight. The year was 2012 when I had that insight is that the way I want to live is that I want to optimize my bit, which is all the things we need to do to live so that I can do more of bit, more of existence. Uh, and I've kind of lived that value for all these years and I continue to live and I really don't see any evidence of changing how I do this. Uh, so 
things like systems and things like having good habits, you know, productive habits. I've studied like over this past, what, 11 years since then, I've studied a lot about habit formation, psychology, mindset, business, like all the different things that are now starting to mesh together into this cohesive system of existence that I practice. And for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm reaching a point of, uh, how to say that? Like, I, I don't feel like I need to move. <laughs> I need to like change something dramatically. Like up until now, it's always been like, oh, I really like, I really got to change my job. I really got to change this. I've really got to move houses. Like, I don't want to move anywhere. I don't want to change anything. I want to go deeper into what I already have right now. And with that, so that value of create, like I even like wear it on my shirt. Now, tell me uh, in the comments, does the lettering read to you backwards or does it read frontwards? Because the way I see the camera is backwards, but I wonder how the stream is coming in for you. Because if it is backwards, I can flip it. <laughs> It'll bother me. <laughs> um, forwards. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, well, that's good. I just see it backwards. Um, yeah, so uh, this thing of, of creating, um, again, Perhaps, thank you, perhaps for you it's easy, but for me it's not easy. It's not easy. I don't know if it's something that happened in my childhood or if it's just like part of my history. I don't really know, but the actual act of sitting down to create for me is hard. Once I cross that threshold, uh, I'm good. Like I just fly, right? I go into that beat state, that, that state of flow and I'm good. Uh, and I already know that ahead of time, but the actual process of getting to my space, you know, I have it all perfectly set up now. Like there's no excuse, but I think it's, it's the mind. I think it's that fear of failure and, um, uh, fear of like, it might not turn out great. And I have all the mindset tools to work through it. So that's what I'm saying. Like I'm reaching a point in my practice and in my life where I have like keys for the locks that come up. Not everything, obviously, I don't claim to name it, to know it all, but many, many things that have like been hard for me before are now starting to flow. Uh, and so my value of create. So create art, create beauty in this world. Uh, create things that improve space. Uh, I put in my heart and soul, my psychic energy, my chi, everything into my art. And I want this art to serve and to elevate people. So that's where that third value comes in, elevate. So elevate goes through absolutely everything I do. Every time I speak to my husband or my children or my friends or you or anyone, I want to elevate you, you know? Every piece of art that I create, I want it to elevate you, to, 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 to share a bit of goodness and light that, that is in this world, you know, like a prism, you know, you can like shine the light and it kind of goes out with like many different colors. So that's the elevate value. So uh, I do love, 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 love drawing. Uh, I love the idea of creating an image. Now, I know like there's animation, there is movies, there is music. I actually take piano lessons because I also enjoy the experience of music so much. Uh, and with all that, the image, the still image, like a picture that I can hang on my wall or I can wear as a t-shirt or I can have on my phone as a case, like that static image to me is still the most powerful thing there is. Uh, and why? Because uh, it it's not time bound. Image exists without a concept of time. Like music is still subject to timing and it has a start and an end, you know? It's like a period. An image just exists, it just exists. 
uh, and an image, it's like same with animation. An animation is kind of time bound, like a movie, right? Like you'll go into a movie theater and you'll have this transformational experience while you are in the movie theater. And then you'll walk off and you'll go on with your life. Uh, and I know that there are people for whom that is their passion. Again, I just want to keep reiterating that this is my own personal experience and you have your own beautiful personal experience. Uh, and I really, really, really invite you to to listen to your experience and what you like and you don't like. And it doesn't need to match anybody. It only needs to match you. You know, there's a lot of focus right now on branding and trends and all that stuff. And I've gone down that route. I've tried it. I've tested it. And I've decided that the best trend that I can create is being myself, my true self, my honest self, my minimized ego self. You know, it's not about self-celebration. It's about self-truth. Cindy says, very cool thought about timelessness of an image. Yes. So I... Well, since you mentioned that, I'll uh, share this with you. So there is another concept in, in Russian. It's called obras. And what that means is it's not, a, it's not just an image. It's an image that creates your reality. It's literally like it means like a, an image. Like, for example, you see an apple, right? That's an image. And then you start to feel like you want an apple and you go and you pick up a juicy, beautiful apple and you nourish yourself. And your body told you, hey, you actually need an apple. Otherwise it wouldn't resonate with you. It wouldn't like, um, it wouldn't trigger that. You wouldn't notice it. You wouldn't respond to that image, obras. Uh, so, so that's what I aim to create. The images that shape and form and create my reality and your reality and anybody's reality that is an onlooker. Uh, so, you know, like, let's say it's a t-shirt. So every time I wear it, I, I literally project this energy out of this image, this power image into the world, right? It's a message I want to share. Every time someone sees this image, if this is aligned with their path and their energy, they will respond to it and it will create a result in their life. It shapes their reality. Uh, I also think of wall art and space design. And I've come to realization that I am extremely interested and passionate in space design. And uh, you might laugh, but I have just discovered for myself the genre of murals. <laughs> it was like just a gigantic painting on the wall, you know, like straight up, I'm like, wow, this is the best thing ever. Like, gosh, I could have like, this will become a canvas, you know, when I get there. Um, so yeah, that's, so that's the value of create, create, create these images, create this power images and organize my life to create more. So create consistently, create every time I have the opportunity to do so. I think this is the key. This is not about feeling impatient. So I have two small children. Uh, I live in a tiny house in the middle of Australian bush. We collect our own water. We process our own waste. We have a garden. Like there is a lot to maintain, you know, uh, and I love every moment of it. I wouldn't change it. I'm not, I do not feel resentment for, for needing to, for like, you know, having lots of those with items that those like items that I must do every day in order to continue to exist. What, what I do resent is when I do wake up in the morning and I just, it has happened, you know, where I have set everything up. I've made my cup of tea and I ended up reading a book way longer than I had intended to. And I should have been drawing and I didn't, I just didn't. 
for whatever reason. Th those are the moments that I'm talking about. So I have my schedule. I have discussed it with my husband. I have discussed it with my children when I am in the studio and when I am with a family fully present, you know? So those studio times is for creation. So that is my value, create, create. Whenever I can, whenever I said I would, create. Do not let procrastination take the best of me. You know, it doesn't serve anyone. <clears throat> Oh, thank you for all the support, guys and ladies uh, in the chat. Like, it really, really does help. I was not planning to have anyone on this stream. So I, like, so appreciate you being here, seriously. Um, yeah. So the next value is co-create. Co-create. I do not believe we live in a silo. We, we are a group. We are a collective. You know, we are again like humans and it's so much more fun to do it with others so i i can be a light right i can be a beacon but when we are together we shine so much brighter like one of my absolute favorite things on earth to do is to actually share a meal with friends uh, or have a trip with friends have a deep and meaningful like conversation with friends uh, and very much, I love the act of co-creation. Again, like, I don't think I need to reinvent the wheel on everything. And you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, together, we, it's, it's like uh, one plus one equals infinity. It's like that kind of math. Because together, we create something that is even more unique and even more... Um, impactful and powerful so uh, in the membership the kawaii drawing club we co-create we co-create with each other like every week we do that draw this week challenge so i i put out something that like like a prompt right but then you go off and you start to spin it and it's like the way i i th like you start to create and that that whole project is a co-creation project uh, and using a music metaphor i feel like we're jamming together and like i strum a chord like like i am taking piano lessons i'm still in the very beginning stages but uh i already have some concept of, about chords and harmonies. Like, let's say I put a C major. I'm like, okay, guys, we're today we're playing in the key of C major. Boom, and you start to like uh, create your own music and your own melodies. And sometimes you may even change the key, and together it turns into this beautiful symphony that could only exist because we co-created. Uh, so yes, it's about sharing. It's about like together we are stronger, which is so true uh, and and that value. So like whenever I see art that is something that I aspire to create, I used to feel tightening in my chest by feeling that, oh my goodness, they're so good. How could I ever be that? Or it would take me a million years. Or I must be drawing every single day in order to get to that level. Like, honestly, I do not feel that anymore. I look at it and I say, wow, look at, look at what we are capable of creating. And I bet it wouldn't even take that long to, like, to do it. And if I really wanted to, I can do this. And then I ask myself, do I really want to do this in place of everything else I'm doing. And most of the time the answer is no, you know, like I like I said, I like what I'm doing right now. I don't want to change. I like it. Uh so that idea of co-creation is so relieving because we're no longer in competition with each other. And like I, I used to get this comment all the time. I actually haven't gotten it in a very long time. Uh hey, you're teaching how to draw kawaii aren't you worried that you cre you're training your competition? And I always thought like, what? No, of course not. Like, this is fun for me. It makes me a better artist. And I see myself as an agent of creativity. Uh, and like, again, I'm not putting myself on an elevated position here. I just enjoy doing this, so I do it. And you enjoy doing your things and you do them. Like we, we all have our gifts. So 
co-creation is really, really powerful. Uh, Christine says, your worth is more than anything, but what you make uh, is more than anything, but what you make it allow you to escape to the books and your kids. Yeah, I hear that creativity is everywhere. Like I hear you, Christine, and I agree with you. If it really flows, go with the flow. But there is a difference between procrastination and flowing. You know, there are times when I'm reading and I'm like, wow, I'm having such a powerful experience right now. I'm just not going to stop the flow. But then there are times when I'm just like, oh, gosh, I'm so comfortable. I don't really want to um, like I don't I don't really want to get up and go to my desk and uh, work. For me, creating art is work. And uh, I used to not be able to listen to any content while I draw, like literally not even music, because I was so focused. I was so focused on what was, I was doing. I was like sweating, you know. Uh, now it's different. It's shifted. I, I actually really love listening to spoken content while I draw. And it doesn't interfere with um the thought process of the art it's almost like they're living in different areas of my brain and i also find that in that state of create creation um i actually can listen deeper to what the spoken word is saying um and i guess yeah it's I, I, I don't know how it works. I just I can just listen to it and process this information and I can also process the thoughts about the art in a, in a different area of my brain space, I suppose. So yeah, uh, so co-creation is a value. And the the third value, like I've already touched on that, is elevate. So basically, Again, you can see how these values are like so connected together. Like I literally have them on the post-it notes right here on my desk because I always, always, always want to remember. Uh, and I don't need to write them anymore, you know, <laughs> obviously. But when they first like when I first distilled the values into these three words, I, I had to write them down. I'm like, I've got to capture this this thought, this 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 moment right now. So. Uh, these are my values, right? And uh, now what I stand for, like what I as an artist stand for is that I like to create art by hand. I like it. I enjoy it. I come from a traditional art background. Like I received training as a fine artist and we used to draw nude models and still lives and watercolor landscapes and like a lot, a lot, a lot of anatomy and bones and like that very very classical European training. So I can draw a, a, a figure without much trouble now. And then I came to Kawaii and illustration and I thought, gosh, this is so brilliant. So for example, when painting a still life, we put you know the subject and the first thing we do is that we'll block in the colors. So uh, like a two-tone drawing, maybe. You put in the color and then maybe three tones. Then you put in the shadow and then you put in the light. And then you start to blend all of these different uh, areas. So the first step is to get the structure of the art in place. Uh, not the art. The structure of the form. So like the, my teacher would say, like at every stage of your drawing, it has to look complete. So you're doing a sketch, it has to already work as a sketch. You don't progress to doing the color until your sketch is working. So he'll like drill us and grill us. And it, we might spend a whole week. I went five days a week. So we might spend a whole week just doing the sketch until it's perfect, you know? And then we'll block in the colors and get it looking right. And that point. So the form, the three-dimensional form has to already work in that blocking stage. And then he, once that's working, he would allow us, like literally, he wouldn't allow us to proceed. 
uh, he would allow us to start blending, blending the colors and start to create a smooth three-dimensional shape. But I've always looked at manga and like anime art and kawaii, you know, and I always thought like, gosh, with just a few lines and a few colors, they're able to capture the essence that we so painstak painstakingly try to create in fine art, you know, like, and it was, it was always like magical to me. So after art school, I, you know, I had to make a decision, like, what do I do next? I like, I love creative freedom. I love just freedom of decision-making uh, and the idea of painting for galleries just didn't work for me. The idea of being an illustrator for hire, like purely like a commercial illustrator didn't work for me. Like I knew I, it's not my path, you know, I would not feel satisfaction. I worked in corporate for three years after university and oh my goodness, I was dying inside every day. Like I did an internship before starting corporate and even like I was still in university doing this internship at UBS Financial Services of all places. And I was like, oh my gosh, is this what I'm signing up for? Like I already can't stand this. It was like a horror feeling in that moment. So yeah. So after art school, I was like, okay, so what do I do now? <laughs> I've got the skill, you know, I've got the training. What do I do? And then at the same time, I was having a baby. Like I was already pregnant. I was still in art school and still studying. Uh, and there was some travel in between. Uh, but in any case, so I had the baby and I was like, okay, what can I do now that I'm home with a newborn, you know, who sleeps a lot? Like my brain is open. My hands are kind of open because I'd strap him into uh, one of those ergo carriers. And like I could sort of paint and do stuff, you know? So yeah <laughs> um vicky says me too yeah uh so kawaii and art and illustration and uh i don't even remember how like what was the point oh okay i remember i remember so i'm talking about drawing by hand and what i stand for right so i enjoy drawing by hand uh, I know there are tools, many, many tools. And please, Cynthia Dixon, if you are here, please don't punch me or feel in any case, like in not even my newest, littlest feeling of negativity. Uh, I personally do not like vector drawing. I don't like the experience of dragging the handles. I like to draw freehand. I really enjoy that. So... I started out doing it all by hand. So my first uh, 21 day challenge course that I have was created totally on paper. And then if I made a mistake, I have this white gel pens. I still have them right there. Uh, and I would just literally draw over it. Like, can you imagine? It took me six months to create the art for that, for that um, course, for that challenge. And, uh, yeah. And then there was, then I started creating weekly tutorials, still doing everything by hand. So for a tutorial, I would trace. So I would do like, have my finished character, then I put a sheet of paper and I would trace the step one. Then I'd move the paper over and trace the step two and then so on. And I would take a red uh, pen and I would draw the new parts of that step. So everything was manual. Okay. So it works. Then I remember one day I had to ship the tutorial like that same day and I had no time and I already had the iPad installed Procreate uh, and I was like, oh, what the heck? I really don't have the time. I don't, I don't even know how to use layers, but maybe I can figure this out. So if you've seen the Hello Kitty tutorial where the kitty is holding a little bear, that's the tutorial when it happened. Uh, and that... Uh, it was so fast. <laughs> it was so fast. And it actually felt very much like drawing by hand, you know? So my iPad has that paper-like texture on it. It's literally called paper-like. And then obviously the Apple Pencil has like 
it has like resistance. It's really nice. And gosh, really procreate Apple, like iPad and Apple Pencil to me, that was my gateway into digital art. I've tried it many times before. I've done vector art. I have done it quite a bit because that was like the only way that I knew how to create digital art. I have a Wacom. I've tried using that. It was really weird to draw here, but look here and see it. Anyway, so I really enjoy creating art by hand. But having said that, that I really, really think that art is the message, is the image that we are creating, not the means of creating it. So when I first was starting out, I thought, oh, maybe I should do Copex. And then I felt like cheating. I don't know why. Don't, I mean, I don't know why. But Copex to me felt like cheating. I don't know why. But uh, and and I, I didn't do it like I didn't I was planning to go really deep into like Copic art because that's what you would use for like anime and stuff and now like I love my Copics I have my collection here so I don't know it was something in my head uh, and so art is the message that you are sharing with the world and you as the creator are responsible for what you are communicating out. And I mean, that again, that's, that's what I believe. It doesn't matter how you create the message. Now, let me go into the AI subject. AI is a tool. AI is a tool, nothing more. AI doesn't think. A program doesn't think. You can prompt it, right? You can massage it and tweak it uh, to create what you create, but it's literally like an extension of your hands, very much like a pencil is, like an iPad is, like paint and everything else. AI is another tool. Like imagine, so we used to write everything by hand, right? Or let's just say we used to walk all the time, everywhere we used to walk, and we could only like cover this sphere, right? Then we got horses and then we could ride a horse and we could like go visit the neighboring village very easily. Then we got cars and we have cities and we could go to different cities, right? Then we got airplanes and maybe AI is like a speed train. Like, what do you call them? I don't remember, Sapsan or something like that, like a, a hyper speed train. It's still a train. It's still a means of getting to the destination, but it's just really fast. And I don't enjoy a fast train ride. I enjoy the slow, slow, slow ride on a horse. I don't actually enjoy horses, but uh, let's say a, a slow train, like a train that will take three days to go to another city. And in the meantime, I can read books. I can look. I can play cards with my friends. I can enjoy meals. I can get off the train, go visit the local uh, museums and things and bookshops, experience the towns along the journey, but then get back on a train and get to my destination. So that's, to me, that's what art is that's what i enjoy and i've had to try many things in order to arrive to this idea so if i was talking to you like if i was talking 10 years ago i i literally could not say these things i didn't have this comprehension i didn't have this uh this insight into what i stand for but now I definitely know that I like to draw by hand. I like to, I don't really mind whether it's uh, manual or digital. I really, really like that illustrative, like that anime style of illustration. You can really only get it by using an iPad, right? Like that cell shading it, style of illustration. Laura, hey, good to see you. Digital kawaii doodler. Cynthia, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, Cynthia, I love you so much. You know that. Uh, I just mentioned it because I didn't want you to feel any 
negativity at all at all about it <laughs> um yeah so art i have my notes here let me let me see uh, AI. So yes, my stand on AI is that it's a tool. My stand on creativity is that we are all creative. Just by being human, you are creative. You've got to polish your sword. You've got to polish your, you know, you've got to gain your skills. Um, I don't think I, okay. So skill in art and drawing, let's say drawing, let's just stick to drawing. Skill in drawing and skill in and talent are different things. Talent is your heart's passion. Skill is skill. It's acquired. It's acquired through practice. So that's my stand on talent. That it is, if you have the passion, you can acquire the skill. Uh, now, I like to create that style of art. And I like to turn it into usable objects. I really, really get a kick out of seeing my art on products. And if that's you, you know, then you are like totally uh, in the right place within our collective. There are many art and creative collectives around. Uh, some love animation, some love, um, I don't know, exhibitions, some love painting and acrylics. In my collective, like this is what I like. I like to create art that I can then put onto a usable object or a poster or a mural as I have discovered. <laughs> but something that physical that you can touch and experience. Um, yeah, and I like to use Procreate mostly for, for drawing digitally, but I'm open, I'm open. Um, the other thing I really, really like is graffiti style lettering and illustration and now i can see why because of that mural connection you know not this vandalizing stuff but the stuff that is truly improving space so ever since having that aha moment that murals exist i just clicked for me i've been watching murals in my local towns and in movies and anywhere to see which ones i like and which ones I feel like I wouldn't really want to create that. And uh, yeah, so graffiti for me is really interesting. Lettering is very, very interesting. The idea that like a letter is a shape, nothing more. It's, it's an image and you can combine these different shapes and it creates a word and that word somebody can actually understand. They can actually read it. So it's literal. I guess I can draw an apple and it's not ambig ambiguous, but there are certain concepts that are best described in words, like trying to think. Like even the word create, right? So you see a whole bunch of shapes here, but when you read it together, you have a concept of what creation is for you. Now, how would I illustrate creation without writing letters? I could do obviously like a desk with art supplies or, you know, like cooking dinner is creation. Everything, like Christine said, everything is creation. But a word is just a very direct way to communicate information. Like, yeah, and there are beautiful word combinations. Um, I'm trying to think of one that like I could bring in right now, but it's like nothing is coming to mind. Uh, but there are like phrases that I read that I'm like, I can see images in my mind of it illustrated and it being a piece of communication. That is really, really, really important to me and powerful. Uh, so sharing what's worth sharing, what I want to share, in the most clear way, in the most clear way. So again, that's why illustration and that flat 2D look to me are so attractive. Uh, <laughs> it was funny. I actually studied graphic design after studying art and I, f I came into it like so green, green completely didn't do any design. I actually have struggled a lot with design. That's why I went to study it. 
And the typography teacher that we had, she said, you're an adder. I'm like, what do you mean? What is that? She said, well, when your design is not working, you add stuff. And that kind of like, I guess it's natural, right? We like detail. We want to put in all the detail. Like maybe that would resonate with you. If a drawing is not working, you try, like maybe you try to do like add more decorations, more colors, more blending, you know, like I used to do that. So I learned from that experience to take things away. When a drawing is not working, I take things away until it's back to the state of working. And then I can start to add things again. So it's kind of like that still life teacher that I had is, you know, like you get the sketch to a working state and then you can proceed. And if something is not working, you erase it and you do it again. So it's the same with illustration now. Like I use the same exact process uh, with illustration. So I want to communicate the idea of my art in the minimal amount of line and color. Like I like limited color palette. And at the same time, I love the visual feast. So it's it's that balance of having only the colors that are necessary to communicate and they're harmonized, they're balanced, you know, they're all working together. It's like a symphony. And at the same time, to have a feast for your eyes, like with the texture, like once I have the core set that is working, bring in the texture, the story, the little expressions, the little decorations, um, you know, little dots. Uh, Cindy likes to use dots. If you're still here, Cindy, <laughs> I love that, um, you know, but they're all kind of like hanging on the scaffolding of that minimalistic structure that I started with. So because I want to communicate to the viewer in the most direct way, I don't want you, the viewer, to do the thinking. So that same teacher used to say that if an art piece requires a paragraph to describe it, to like get it, then the artwork has failed. If an art piece requires a paragraph to describe it, like to make sense of it, then the art has failed. That like shook me to the core. The art has to work just by being itself. I don't need to describe to the person what I actually meant by my art. Um, and that's how that's how I like it. That's how that's what I strive to do. And I spend a lot, a lot, a lot of energy. So I don't create volumes of art. I'm a pretty uh I create art pieces and I toil on them until they work, you know, and I don't move on. Uh, so I don't post a lot on social media because I'm just not cranking out a large volume. I know that as the children grow, I will spend more energy on my art. I'm not worried about that. But right now I show up and I create my truth. I don't. So it's kind of like not racing, not competing with anyone, but myself, my truth. Um, yeah. So that's. That's what I stand for. And I also want to talk about trends here. So trends and pop culture also. I do have certain pop culture characters that I adore, like Studio Ghibli, I really, really like. Uh, Howl's Moving Castle, I think, is one of the greatest pieces of animated work that there is. Um, I really like Mario Universe. Uh, we have a Nintendo Switch at home, which we play with the children. Uh, I I like, you know, I, I, I like that imaginative world, like adventure. I like the growth of it. Like, you know how in those video games, the character progresses and evolves. Like we do play Zelda as well. I like the Zelda universe where you collect skills and you upgrade your weapons. Like that gamified kind of like that growth, that progress. I really like that. So I'm totally happy to create art around those stories and those pop culture, you can say, um, a pop culture uh, 
characters, but I'm not going to force myself. So uh, I'm going to use my husband as an example. I hope he will, you know, forgive me. And there's no like criticism at all here. Uh, he grew up on superheroes. To him, like Spider-Man, Iron Man, all of that is very strong, like Star Wars. And I just don't resonate with that universe. And I don't, I used to think that unless I am creating baby Yoda, I just cannot be successful. And that is like, I don't think that anymore. If baby Yoda doesn't resonate with me, I don't need to draw baby Yoda. I can draw Mario. I can draw Kirby. I really like Kirby, you know? Uh, but I don't need to force myself to create what I don't want to create. I think that's the point. So trends are fine if they align with what I already want to create. But at no point, and this is I've decided that, am I creating because it's popular, because someone else is doing it, if it's not aligning with the message and the communication that I want to put out there. So that's my position on trends. And that means it's a harder sell. You know, yes, we still live in a physical world and we still need to make money, right? We, we need money for rent, for mortgage, for food, for art supplies, for electricity, for internet connection to, to, to do this. Uh, so yeah, and, and it's a slower road, I imagine. Like, I think... It's a slower road if you're not using the trends, but you're kind of setting trends. But then at the same time, I the most successful posts that I have are the ones where, where I am the most open and the most genuine. Like, yeah, I just want to mention that story. I, I shared a story on Instagram where I went for a run and I just said like, oh, I have a lot on my mind. And I just put like little labels of the things like family, business, art, you know, creativity. And I almost didn't publish it. Like I literally remember that moment. I said, no, 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 nobody cares. Like this is just my own personal dirty laundry. Like why? But I posted anyway because I just decided I'm going to share the good and the bad and the ugly. And I cannot tell you how many messages I got by saying, yes, same, same, you know, like yeah, I'm in that space too. And I realized like, yeah, that wasn't trendy, but it was genuine. It was real, real. I guess that's that's the key word here, real. So for me, it's not so much about trends. It's about being real. So that's what I stand for, being the real you. And I want to see the real you. And in my members, I always, always say to them like, your art, your rules, you know? Yes, we talk about the kawaii formula and the color palettes and all that stuff because it gives you the scaffolding, because it gives you the structure to learn how to use your real self to, to communicate. Without that structure, you would be lost, you know? How can you systematize your color preferences if you have no understanding of color theory to speak like not even so much theory but how to like use and apply color right so that's what the formulas are for but then ultimately it's the real you and i've seen this uh in the membership happen where a new member comes in and their art is not balanced yet right they they are expressing themselves they are working hard it doesn't have that polish and they keep doing the tutorials, keep posting for feedback, uh, keep improving the drawings. And then it starts to, the real jam starts to come out because it always was there. It always was there. It's just, it needed some of that structure and polish, but I would never ever say, this is not kawaii, you know, this doesn't correspond to blah, 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 color palette, you know? Some people actually want to get it like, want to get it to look like a certain style. Like, hey, I'm going for Hello Kitty style. Here's my drawing. What can I change? So sure, I will say, okay, well then do the eyes bigger and, you know, move the mouth up and nose or whatever it's called. Um, apparently Hello Kitty doesn't have a mouth. But I would like, if, if, if a member wants specific feedback on a specific style, I would absolutely give it. 
most of the time it's about just sharing like here here's what i've created and i will reflect to that member what's working in that drawing to the best of capacity that i have to sort of feel into what who they are what they want to create and sort of nurture that and nurture that and bring it out and when it blossoms i'll actually post a member story maybe next week when it blossoms it is the most amazing magical light that shines and and that like ah that just makes it all worth it gosh we're coming up on the hour so i've said what i wanted to say i've wanted to have this to set this as a base point for where i am starting so i am talking a lot about myself however this series is about my personal experiment and exploration in the uh so in the purpose that you may hear something that resonates with you you may relate to the experience and you may have your own insight that's the key like maybe you'll have your own insight and maybe you are sitting down and drawing right now and listening to me talk like i do when i talk right so it's like a give. It's a give back to the community. It's that value of co-creation. So I invite members to create with me. And I also like want to co-create with others, with others. Be, be part, not always be in a leadership position, but also sometimes be in the in a consumer position, you know? Like that's what I do when I listen to others. I consume their content. And now I feel I want to also put out this this channel as well um yeah so if this is interesting to you give this video a heart you know it'll help the algorithm more people can see it uh, i'm not monetizing these videos i have not turned on the ads because you know what like it would be the worst if i'm saying something and you get an ad and it just breaks the flow of of your insight i just i can't have that so if you want to support my work and your work our creative collective work we've got the membership the kawaii drawing club kawaiidrawingclub.com you can check it out if it resonates with you you can join it that is you know if you want to support my art and your art that's the best way to do that um i really really thank you for being here today I will continue doing this no matter how many people show up. Next time, I will have a specific topic to talk about and go in deep. And I really, truly appreciate every single one of you that creates, that does this work. I know it's not easy and it's also blissful. We're also so fortunate and so fortunate to live in this time to create how, you know, how... Um, to have the ability to, to live this life. Because back in the day, maybe, like I know in my mom's generation, she didn't have that. Maybe she didn't have that capacity to just be an artist because you had to be, you know, there were so many gatekeepers. Now we have YouTube, like it's really amazing. So I, I feel so blessed to have this experience. So honestly, like so, so, so happy. So thank you for being here. I'm sending you so much love uh, and I'll see you next week. Hey, Ed, good to see you. Yes, awesome. I'm so glad you guys were here. I'll see you soon. Bye.